welcome to the Destin Business Forum brought to you by the Destin Area Chamber of Commerce. I'm your host, Amy Perry, and our guest today is Brooke McLean. You are Director of Development at the Air Force Enlisted Village. Yes. That's right? Thank, yes, thank you very much for having me. Thank you for coming. We were just talking before we got on air about some of these wonderful stories that we're going to get to um, in a minute. But just tell us what the Air Force Enlisted Village is. Uh, the Air Force Enlisted Village is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that was set up to help the widows of retired Air Force enlisted members. Okay, we and how long has it been set up? We, uh, we established the organization about 50 years ago, uh, and we purchased our first property in this area in Fort Walton Beach. It was called Teresa Village, and we purchased that in the mid-1970s. And then in 1980, we bought a large chunk of land from the Air Force uh, by Eglin Air Force Base, okay. and we established Bob Hope Village. And that's 125 acres of property out there. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. Wow, that is big. And um, who, who can stay there? Uh, our primary um, audience, if you will, is the widow of a retired Air Force enlisted member. Okay. Um, so that's the, our nonprofit mission. Uh, along with that, though, we also have retired couples that live with us. Uh, Air Force couples. Uh, we also have widows of officers that live with us and then widows of other service members that have retired as well. Okay, so, so you have? We have, yeah, we have all services. We have officers enlisted um, and uh, it, it's a wonderful location. It really is. It, sa it sounds like it. All right, I was asking you um, a couple things before we started and you mentioned that you have the mom rule. <laughs> you informed me that it is not mom is always right, although that's a good rule too. Right? That's the one I learned. Okay. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, and that's the one my daughter should, um, should follow. But tell me what the mom rule is at the Enlisted Village. The mom rule is uh, almost like a value statement for us and it's how we make sure that we take care of our residents correctly. Uh, and so when we interact with a resident we ask them, we ask ourselves, would we do this to our mom, would we do it for our mom, would our mom approve? So assuming that you like your mom, uh, <laughs> yeah. if you answer those three questions correctly, uh, you're normally on the right path. That is a great statement to live by. It really is. It is. I think a lot of others could, um, could adopt that. All right. Um, now I have a note about Bob Hope Village 5, which would imply that we have Bob Hope Village 1 through 4. That's we correct. do. That's right. Bob Hope Village 1 through 4 uh, are, are the original complex um, or facilities that we built uh, in the mid-1980s, and there's 256 apartments that are there. Um, Teresa Village, as I mentioned earlier, was our first location, and we sold that a couple years ago to a local real estate investor. Okay. We're currently leasing it back from him so that our residents don't have to move. Sure. And in the meantime, we're building 96 new apartments on our main campus of Bob Hope Village, and we'll call it Bob Hope Village 5. Bob Ver Hope Village 5. Very creative. Um, okay, uh, now the fun part, we're going to get to some... Um, really cool stories but before that if somebody wants to donate we're gonna flash up the the website yes. and they can just make a donation go there and figure out how to make a donation uh, they're welcome to contact me or anyone from the Air Force enlisted village uh, our phone number I think will be displayed yes uh, along with our website um, we also have a great Facebook page if you want to go out and check us out okay. um, lots of good information out there uh, cute little stories and pictures and things that the residents are doing. Okay, so let's talk about um, just a couple of stories. Mary Gilmore, tell <laughs> me about her. Uh, Mary Gilmore is an absolutely wonderful lady. Uh, she just moved over from Teresa Village into our assisted living facility, which is the Hawthorne House. Um, she is 101 years old, which is amazing. Yay, Mary. <laughs> Amazing in itself, uh, but the piece that we like to talk about in addition to that is that she moved in with us in 1976. Wow. So she's been with us for almost 40 years, and we, we like to tell that story because it relays our commitment to the residents that move in with us. Once you move in, uh, you're welcome to stay as long as you want to stay. Wow. And it must be a really nice place for her to stay for 40 years. It yeah. is. She is a wonderful <laughs> lady, and she, uh, she actually hits our uh, ceremonial first tee shot at our Bob Hope uh, golf tournament that we hold in May. Oh, good for her. I so, love yeah, that. Yeah, she's wonderful. She hits the ball better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the secret to living to be 101. That's right. Okay, um, Tech Sergeant Corey Campbell, tell me about 
Uh, it, it's one of the uh, tragic stories, but it also illustrates the way that we try to help our community, and uh, in particular the active duty community. Um, Corey Campbell was an intel specialist at Herbert Field. Um, he had deployed numerous times and had returned from a deployment, and uh, it, this was during the height of the war, and he was notified that he needed to deploy again. Um, and uh, tragically, his wife uh, committed suicide uh, when she heard that news uh, and left him with four kids, uh, and he really didn't know what to do. Uh, his housing situation, he had been living on base housing at Herbert Field, uh, and he wasn't going to stay in that house, uh, and they weren't able to find a solution for him. So his first sergeant contacted uh, our CEO, Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, retired Jim Binnaker, explained the situation, uh, and Chief Binnaker said, bring him over, we'll take care of him. Uh, so we took two of our guest apartments and we knocked out a, a hole in between. Uh, and so he brought him and his four kids over and we warned him, said, you know, you're now gonna have hundreds of brand new grandparents. <laughs> so beware of the n amount of lasagna and spaghetti and cookies that are gonna be coming through the door. And um, I bet, you know, all, all kidding aside, I bet during that time that was very helpful for him and for his children. It was. He, he just he came into uh, a place where uh, they loved him and they cared for him because he's part of the Air Force family and the military family. Uh, and so uh, he, uh, he wanted to pay us after Aww. he stayed with us for a few months. And, and we said, no, but if you'll let us tell your story, that Aww. would be good. So Aww. it's, again, just a representation of how we try to help the military and the active duty folks. Good place doing something for, for a good, uh, good family. Yes, okay. Um, Last story, Lillian Hansen. Tell me about her. Lillian Hansen was the widow of a retired Air Force enlisted member. Um, before her husband passed away, she had taken care of her parents also. Uh, and she ended up living in a camper, the kind of camper that slides in the back of a pickup truck, except she was living in that and there was no pickup truck. Uh, so she was really in a bad situation. Uh, through our chapel program and through our nurses, we learned of her situation. Uh, she was over near Pensacola. So we sent a group of people over to go pick her up. And in the meantime, we did some research and found out all the details of her husband's service. And we got her uh, ID card and we got her benefits started again. Wow. And so it was, um, it's one of those situations. You just, you hope that people aren't living in a situation like that. Sure. Um, when they have the certain benefits that because the widows have served alongside their husbands sure. for all those years. Uh, but unfortunately they do happen and uh, we're just grateful when we learn and are able to help the ladies out. Okay, on December 6th you are having a vigil. Tell me about it. We are. Uh, we have uh, every December 6th we have a Angel of Hope candlelight vigil. That's out at Bob Hope Village uh, and it's just an opportunity for the community to come out. It's at 6 o'clock uh, and it will probably be a little chilly uh, but we uh, have a quick service and we're able to celebrate uh, the spirit of hope. Uh, we, we're so fortunate to have had the connection with Bob Hope. Yes. Uh, and he was, uh, of course, a, a big supporter of ours and he visited this community so many different times. Uh, and so it's kind of a play on words, but it's a, it's a wonderful ceremony and it's an opportunity for us just to kind of pause and reflect, especially uh, in the season that we're in. Yeah, that's nice. Nice. Yes. And it should be a little bit cold. It's December, right? It probably will be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have I left anything out? I don't think so, other than I would, I would uh, just uh, talk about the Bob Hope Village 5, and we're doing the capital campaign for, to fund that. So if you're interested and you're looking for an end-of-year donation yes. or you're looking for a place to maybe get a tax benefit, uh, please contact us. Uh, we are so grateful to be able to help the widows and the ladies and the gentlemen that live with us. Um, but again, we're a nonprofit, so. Okay, great, and you guys really, really do great things. Thank, Thank you. you for coming and letting me know about it. We'll be back.